Okay, I want to tell you about my in-ear monitor workaround and I'm going to do the big reveal first so you don't have to watch any more of this video than is absolutely necessary and I'll do all the explaining after that. So here it is. I plug earbuds into a voice recorder and I put the voice recorder in my back pocket while I'm playing live. Genius! Not. But it does perform three important functions. One, hearing protection. Two, voice monitoring, because anytime you block your ears, you hear your voice really well in your head. And three, band monitoring. So let me explain all these. First, uh, about hearing protection, you know, for the longest time, I didn't use hearing protection. And when I finally wised up, I used these. And we all know the problem with, this, with these. Uh, one, they look bad. I used to cut mine in half, and so they kind of were a little bit hidden in my ears. But the bigger problem is that they cut out too many of the high frequencies, and maybe too much of the sound in general. You get a lot of bass frequencies, but no highs. Now, if you're a drummer with a good vocal monitor, or you're a bassist with the monitors in front of you, or listening to front of house, then, yeah, good cheap solution because you can still hear the fundamentals of your instrument and protect your hearing. A better solution, especially for treble players like guitarists or keyboardists, is these. These are decibel cut ear plugs that have a filter in them that, are, uh, that allow high frequencies in and they filter at varying degrees. You can buy them at minus 22, minus 20, minus 16, minus 12. These are the lowest I could find, uh, sorry, the highest I could find at minus 12 dBs, and they were much better because they let in some high frequencies, so I had more of a reference tone for my guitar. Or when I was playing bass, I could hear more of the guitar and keyboards and vocals around me. The problem is, that although we have two good voice monitoring because they're blocking uh, they're blocking the ears the sound cut from these and the loudness of the vocals means that there's too big of a gap and the vocals actually drown out all the music especially when i was singing long passages i found that i like would lose sometimes the the tone of the tune and sing slightly flat or slightly slightly sharp. So I needed three band monitoring. I needed a way to get the band sound higher. Like if they made these in minus six decibels that would have been great but then I'm not really getting the hearing protection that I should be getting. And that's when I came up with this idea. So by plugging these in I, they go around the ears, and so they're a little bit inconspicuous. They block out the sound, they allow me to hear my voice, and with the voice recorder, I can slowly increase the volume of full frequency sound, of the full frequency sound of the band around me, up to the point where my voice isn't drowning it out. The overall sound, even though I'm increasing the volume of the voice recorder, the overall sound is still much less than not using any uh, protection at all. So, all problems solved. Now, you might be thinking, dude, why don't you just get an in-ear monitor system? Right, well, let me tell you for whom this is a great solution. First of all, people who want to protect their ears and don't have or can't get in-ear monitors. Now, I live in Japan. Until very recently, in-ear monitor systems were illegal because broadcasting uh, devices were illegal. Now, I could have ordered them from the United States or Canada and used them illegally. I didn't really want to do that, but a bigger problem existed. When I asked the band what they thought about getting an in-ear monitor system, the other main singer in the band, he said, Dude, I already have enough problems like plugging in my guitar and tuning and changing the battery and setting up my mic and doing sound check. I don't want to have another thing to worry about, like wires hanging off me and stuff. So that was the end of that. So I couldn't get them. And even if I could, 
one of the members in the band didn't want to use them, so it was no use getting it. So I was all alone. And the other people who might want to use this uh, are people who play clubs that sometimes don't have monitors. Again, I play in Japan. A lot of the places are so small that monitors don't really fit on the stage. And so with no hearing protection, front of house is enough for me. I can hear my vocals through the front of the house, but as soon as you put something in your ears, then you're not here in front of the house anymore. And uh, you can hear your voice really well, but not the band. And then you want to pipe some band into your ears. And this is the solution. So there we go. If you're in any of those predicaments, uh, or you just don't want to spend money for an in-ear monitor system, uh, then give this a try. Maybe at your next band practice, uh, just plug your earphones into your voice monitor and give it a go. Some pitfalls to stay away from that uh, I tried, and you can benefit from my having already tried them. You cannot plug earphones into your iPhone or you know cell phone and monitor that way because there's a delay. There's a disturbing amount of latency. Also, you cannot use Bluetooth, which would be f amazing if you could, but you cannot use Bluetooth with your iPhone either or with any other recording device because Bluetooth has an unacceptable amount of latency. You can try the, both of those systems for yourself uh, plug in and start playing guitar, do some singing, and you'll understand what I mean. Okay, great. I uh, hope somebody can use this. And, uh, you know, please like, subscribe. Just takes a second. Thanks for watching.